We are excited to see two important castles today. Castles that we have almost visited before. So that's what we're gonna try and do today. Lindisfarne and Bamburgh. On my first visit to Bambara in 2010, we drove by the castle and I said, oh, that looks like a nice place to visit. We need to come back. You can tell that 13 years ago when I took this photo, my camera was not very good. Then in 2021, we returned to Northumberland and I came to Bambara again, only to discover that the castle was closed to the public because Harrison Ford, along with the rest of the cast and crew, were in the castle filming the latest Indiana Jones movie, called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It is allegedly the last installment in the Indy franchise. Coincidentally, that movie will be released in the next couple weeks. And here I am publishing the vlog of my third visit to Bambara in 2022 when I was third time lucky and finally toured inside the amazing Bambara Castle. So come along with us as we see inside and out what makes this castle so special. The best views of the outside of Bambara that I have are the clips of drone footage that Ian filmed in 2021. It was a beautiful day and I just love the blue sea, the expansive beach, and the imposing castle stretching along the coastline. With its nine acres of castle grounds sitting 45 meters above sea level, you can totally understand how Bambara Castle has stood guard on this bit of coastline for over 1400 years. Pity it's not a bit sunnier and warmer. The Bambara Beach is still looking beautiful today. Bambara became the capital of the Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Northumbria in the 6th century, when it served as a stronghold for the kings of Northumbria. The original structure of the castle was built during this time. Its location gave it advantages for both defense and trade. Many consider it to be one of the most important historical landmarks in England. The castle was the site of many noteworthy battles, as far back as a documented Viking attack in 993. A century later, William Rufus, son of William the Conqueror, built the castle keep and made it a strategic English outpost for military forays into Scotland. The Norman lord William de St. Calais rebuilt and fortified the castle, transforming it into a stone fortress. The castle played a role in the Norman suppression of rebellions in the north. During the medieval period, the castle's strategic location made it a key defensive position during the Scottish Wars of Independence and the Border Reaver conflicts. As this aerial view highlights, Bambara is an architectural marvel. It is situated on a rocky outcrop overlooking the rugged Northumbrian coast, which only enhances its striking appearance. In fact, the construction of the castle on its mountainous rock foundation always reminds me of Edinburgh Castle. As you look at the exterior of the castle from the inner courtyard, you can see that it has been expanded and renovated many times throughout the centuries, thus resulting in a mix of architectural styles and building materials. Like Windsor Castle, which I just recently visited, this gives the structure a feeling of looking at an architectural map of history spread out before your eyes. One thing Bambara is known for is being the first English castle to fall by cannon fire, which happened in 1464 during the War of the Roses, when three massive cannons fired on the castle and the Lancastrians surrendered. I enjoyed finally being inside the castle walls to see the cannons that currently line the border of the castle facing the sea. The Battery Terrace was fortified with cannons in response to Napoleon's threat to invade. And medieval arrow slits are still present in the gate towers. From them you can gaze across the sea to the Farne Islands and Lindisfarne. The Farns were the location of my Puffin video from two weeks ago. And next week, I'll share my vlog of our visit to Lindisfarne, so stay tuned. Inside the 12th century castle keep, the armory offers a dramatic display of weapons. Pikes, halberds, muskets, and various projectile weaponry is featured. A 15th century composite bow and a 17th century Flemish target crossbow decorate the walls. I'd like to wear the goose one. 
Speaking of walls, the walls of the castle keep are 11 feet thick at the front, quite the sturdy fortress. The display of defensive equipment extends to the staterooms, where you can see these suits of armor. The staterooms also hold a vast collection of artifacts, heirlooms, and valuable gifts from distinguished castle guests throughout the decades. From the courtyard, you can view this doorway into the keep hall, which has a unique bottle shape, which was designed to allow soldiers on horseback to enter at a gallop without dismounting. Inside the keep hall, you'll see vaulted ceilings and an ancient Anglo-Saxon well, which descends down through 145 feet of rock to allow clean water to be supplied to this defensive stronghold. Here's a look inside the dungeon. Be sure to mind your head and the rest of your body. This is a place of gruesome torture and imprisonment. Now for a tour of the kitchen areas. I'm always interested in seeing the cooking equipment and the depiction of foods from bygone eras and eras. Here's my favorite part of the castle, the bakery. I'm feeling a bit peckish. It's too bad those pies and loaves of bread are made out of plastic. Here's all the sinks in the old kitchen. The fair chamber is where a carefully curated collection of ceramics are displayed, featuring 18th and early 19th century decorative china. I was chuffed to happen upon this display in the castle. It was a temporary installation honoring my favorite of all birds, the puffin. Adorable, aren't they? The magnificent cross hall is home to an immense Tudor style fireplace with intricate stone carvings which are surrounded by vast tapestries which line the room. The library is home to William Armstrong's personal library of literature from the 17th and 18th centuries, and a beautiful pool table, or billiards or snooker. I can't tell the difference, so feel free to correct me. The King's Hall is a grand and impressive room that was built on the site of the medieval Great Hall. It is a Victorian masterpiece that boasts a false hammer beam ceiling crafted from teak wood imported from Thailand. Bambara has a long history of royal connections. It was once owned by the Anglo-Saxon kings and later became the property of the powerful Norman dynasty, or dynasty if you prefer. It has welcomed visiting monarchs such as King Edward I and Queen Victoria. In the 1600s, the castle was passed from the crown to private ownership. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the castle fell into disrepair and started to crumble. But in 1894, the castle was purchased and restored by a famous Northumbrian of the Victorian era, industrialist Lord William Armstrong. For lots more information on Armstrong, I highly recommend you watch my vlog of his gorgeous Cragside estate. He also made a lasting mark on Newcastle with this stunning Jesmond Dean park that I featured in my Newcastle vlog. I'll link to both of those videos in the description. I'm fascinated by the fact that the Bambara Castle remains owned by the members of the Armstrong family today. As you walk throughout the castle, you will see family photos of the various lords and their spouses and children. And I love this painting which showed Lord Armstrong and each of the subsequent generations down to the current family occupying the castle. I'm Francis Armstrong, the current keeper of the castle. I say keeper because I don't feel I own it. I'm just keeping it going for future generations making sure it's in great shape for everyone that comes to visit. Bambara is among the largest inhabited castles in the UK. As an aside, I have to say that as a YouTuber, I love that despite the fact that the family is living in part of the castle, they do allow filming in the part of the castle which is open to the public. So many lovely castles these days prohibit all photos and filming of the tour inside. It is really most vexing. Throughout its history, Bambara Castle has witnessed conflicts, royal visits, architectural transformations, and has become an enduring symbol of Northumberland's heritage. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of this historic castle. Thanks so much for watching and, and do something good in the world today.